Stage 2 of Imperishable Night plops us right on one of many paths that humans use for trade and travel. You'll notice this one, as well as many others like it, aren't made of asphalt, like the roads outside your window. This implies just a teensy little bit that Gensokyo is a little bit behind the times technologically. But then that makes sense, given that it's a haven for either obsolete or forgotten things. But at night time, the yokai generally have their run of the road, and go back to lounging around the area come daybreak. For this stage, I'll be talking about fandom tendencies and joke depictions, and I know you're like, Damn it, Joiner! You said this was an informative series, why are you wasting your time talking about that? And the answer would be that, one, I've exhausted everything else I could talk of at this point in time. Like I mentioned in Scarlet Devil and Perfect Cherry Blossom, the story's plot doesn't usually kick in until stage 3. Two, the fanbase is pretty damn loud about certain things, concerning certain characters, and certain situations. I hope you see where I'm going with this. Let's hope this doesn't turn into a rant video, as that would probably be counterproductive to the things I have planned. Maybe it'll happen anyway and turn out for the better, I don't know. So, yes, the fans are really vocal at times, and they're the ones that actually get the word out on the status of Toho itself. For example, when I first joined the Toho fanbase, I had no idea that Zun had a blog of his own where he shares details about the releases of his games, and yet somehow, Everyone knew about new characters because they somehow got their hands on the demo versions when they were released at Reitei Sai or whatever, and they were already making art and arranges, and at this point, since they know next to nothing about the character apart from what little information Jin shared with them, and what gets translated over on JP, they attempt to fill in the blanks based on dialogue, appearance, and sometimes even the music. Sometimes it sticks, regardless of later books directly conflicting with these fill-ins. And in most characters' cases, it is less than pleasant. For instance, Letty White Rock was the target of fat jokes for a long time after Perfect Cherry Blossom, and like I said prior, it is starting to taper off as people are being drawn towards new characters and the like. After Chen debuted, and the second Toho M1 Grand Prix was released into the public, her popularity exploded! And as far as I can tell, there's one of the only reasons why, apart from B-Cub's Chen blowing up on 4chan. There was really nothing standing out in her fight with a heroine except she used what you could consider familiars? which I wouldn't call standing out, really. I guess she could be the first person to try and tackle the player? I don't know. Shoot, shoot the bullet, on the other hand. I speak from experience when I say that no one ever told me about Chen's agility. Not a soul. Of course, I'm at fault, too, not looking it up myself until I realized there was a wiki for it, but really, no one mentioned it. Okay, enough about Chen. Really, I mean it this time. Next on our list of unfortunate victims is Mr. Lorelei, a Yosuzume. That is a portmanteau of the Japanese words Yoru, translating to Night, and Suzume, which translates to Sparrow. Hence, she's a Night Sparrow. Night Sparrows are a folk legend in Western Japan that are said to come across travelers on mountain trails, chirping at them. They are also capable of possession, which is sometimes used to bring bad luck to the victim. It is also said that if they are captured, they inflict the captor with Nyctalopia, better known as Night Blindness, which would be where Misty's ability originates as she can also cause night blindness with her songs. Now, Nyctalopia, I'm going to switch gears for a little bit. In your retinas, there are two types of photoreceptor cells, rods and cones. Nyctalopia is a condition in which the rod cells lose their ability to respond to light. As a result, things appear darker or more difficult to see, as if it were nighttime. An easy way to counteract this condition is to have a ri uh, diet rich in vitamin A, including carrots and eels. As a matter of fact, when Mistia is not terrifying humans via singing, she runs a food stand that specializes in grilled lamprey, a type of eel. One could consider this... fraud. I'm surprised no one was confronted her about it yet. And yet, most fans of Toho, at least the ones I've seen, will completely forsake all of the things I said or showed you just now for one central phrase. Yuyuko ate Mistia. And although... It, it, it happened as a sort of joke at the end of the stage. This is bad on two fronts. Three, actually. One, Yuyuko's mostly food-related allegories do nothing but further her fan reputation as a glutton and a hungry ghost. Two, much like Mei Ling and Letty, Mistyo was just about instantly slapped with the automatically incompetent Forever label and written off as a joke character. Just once, I'd like to see something break out of the norm, like the PV, unable to do anything but sing. 3. Even if it is just a joke, it's so old by now that you'll hardly find anyone really laughing at it. Just let it go! You just don't know when to give up, do you? 
I really have a problem with getting off track. So before I imitate any more Sonic Adventure 2, I'm going to mention that this doesn't just happen with Toho fans. No. It may not be as obvious, but this happens with every fandom that makes a name for itself. You've got the Toho fans, you've got the Sonic fans, you've got the My Little Pony fans, the shippers, the anti-shippers, the first-person shooter junkies, I'm probably missing a group. Each one of these fandoms, among others, has a certain collective characteristic among them, or has appeared to have done something to make themselves be seen as generally unbearable amongst other people, to the point of perhaps even wanting to disassociate themselves from whichever fanbase suits the mood. Is it necessarily their fault? This is a question that has an annoyingly ambiguous answer. A lot of people say that it is, but some people might want to look the other way due to whatever reason. If fans are said to act like this, would we be allowed to enjoy anything without looking like hypocrites? What do you think? Go ahead and leave a comment. I want to know what the fans think about the fans, and fandom in general. And no last spell, because Mistia doesn't have a dependable pattern I can graze. I can get it sometimes, but oh well, this isn't one of those times.